The last unexplored frontier of our planet is that of our oceans, which seem to hold a number of impossible to understand discoveries that scientists are still attempting to understand. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three mysterious islands. Mysterious island teeming with life only four years after being created. In 2015, the island of Hunga Tonga suddenly emerged in the southern Pacific Ocean near Fiji. A hidden underwater volcano erupted and drove the rock up to the surface to create the island. The volcano was situated between two already existing islands in the South Pacific, then connecting them to one oversized island. It's located in the Kingdom of Tonga and technically has no official name, but locals have dubbed it Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai, which they call Hunga Tonga for short. It is a volcanic rock island situated 19 miles southeast of Tonga Island. It is made up of black gravel and is relatively small. Within the last 150 years, only two other volcanic islands have suddenly burst into the ocean like this. NASA and other research organizations have been studying the island closely, taking frequent GPS measurements to map out the island. Most of their research has been conducted purely by satellite or aircraft until 2019. Four years after it initially emerged, they finally visited the island and observed it on foot. The scientists noted that the ground was not quite like sand, instead it was made up of pea-sized gravel and was quite painful to walk on. They also found that hundreds of seabirds had already nested on the southern cliffs of the island. Most surprisingly, though, was what they found on the black gravelly beaches. Beautiful pink and purple flowering plants were growing across the devoid island, despite poor soil conditions. Scientists believe that the plant life grew because of the seabirds, called sooty terns, living on the island. They seeded the isle with their droppings. Whatever seeds and plants they ate were then transferred into the soil and fortunately took hold of the environment, allowing flowers to bloom on this mysterious island. Researchers are eagerly studying Hunga Tonga, trying to learn as much as possible about the process and qualities of rare volcanic islands before it erodes completely. Due to the harsh weather conditions of the Pacific Ocean and constant rainfall, the island is crumbling away quickly. Scientists are surprised at the rapid rate at which the coastline is eroding and are not sure how long it will take until it completely disappears. Until then, they will continue to observe the volcanic rock, take measurements and watch the flowers thrive. The Mystery of Sandy Island Sandy Island is a small island near Australia that has been drawn on chart maps for over a hundred years. The only problem is that it does not exist. Located near New Caledonia, in the southwest Pacific Ocean, Sandy Island was supposedly situated somewhere between the Chesterfield Islands and the Nereus Reef in the Coral Sea off Australia's northeast coast. It first appeared on maps in the late 1700s until it was semi-removed in the mid-1970s. Nearly 40 years later, it was once again brought up in conversation as an Australian research ship finally resolved the mystery and provided proof that it was non-existent. The island was quickly removed from all maps and datasets in 2012. In 1774, Captain James Cook of the British Royal Navy explored the French territories in the South Pacific. He charted the island just off the archipelago New Caledonia, labelling it Sandy One. Although Cook managed to chart the Grand Terre Reef quite accurately despite his era and technique, he was incorrect about Sandy Island. Nothing is there. Interestingly enough, though, the island was reported by other ships a hundred years later. From 1870 through the 1890s, the fictitious island was included in various Navy maps and listed in the Australian Maritime Directory. The nearest islands are the Chesterfield Islands, which sit about 100 kilometers or 62 miles westward of the original location. Historians do not know whether these cartographers and sailors were trying to correct Captain Cook's mapping 
as they share the same island name, yet are positioned a few hundred miles further west than his. In the 1970s, the island became such a hot topic that the Australian Hydrographic Service, or AHS, mapped the sea floor and measured the water depth to find the island. They were unable to find any shallow depths to indicate potential islands or reefs. They even flew over it and found nothing. In 1974, Sandy Island was officially removed from the hydrographic charts by the French Hydrographic Service. Despite this discovery, Sandy Island stayed on many bathymetry compilations for another 30 years because it was already included on the digital formats of maps by the US National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, or NGA, which is used as a standard coastline dataset worldwide. In November 2012, the Australian research ship RV Southern Surveyor sailed through the area where Sandy Island was supposed to be and debunked this mystery. They were studying plate tectonics and noticed that they had various differing maps and decided to investigate. They found no depths shallower than 1,300 meters below sea level or any indication of an island. What they did find, though, were floating pumice sea rafts. Pumice ejected from underwater volcanoes float together in rafts on the ocean's surface and are easily mistaken for islands. A volcano study near Tonga showed that pumice rafts traveled over 3,000 kilometers, or 1,864 miles west, due to the wind and currents. These rafts ended up within 20 kilometers, or 12.4 miles, of the suspected Sandy Islands location, suggesting that the ships in the 18th and 19th centuries saw pumice, not islands. The island was incorrectly mapped for over a century even managing to make it onto digital maps in 2010. The location was even listed on Google Maps, although it only appeared as a dark, pixelated space. After the research ship undiscovered the island in 2012, the National Geographic Society officially removed Sandy Island from its maps. The Demonic Island At the beginning of the 16th century, geographic maps began featuring an island of Newfoundland, Canada. This phantom island didn't exist and disappeared off the maps by the mid-17th century as cartographers and geographers realized the inaccuracies. Many islands in that region have been nicknamed a Devil Island due to the First Nation people avoiding places where someone had passed away as they believed demons overrun it. The isles in this area were believed to be haunted by demons and wild beasts who attacked ships passing by or set foot on its shores. There are even famous stories and songs of a French noblewoman abandoned on the island for many years. The legend follows that Marguerite de la Roque, an heiress traveling with her uncle Jacques Cartier to New France or Quebec in the spring of 1541. Other colonists joined them under Sieur de Roberval, who was appointed the first Viceroy of Canada. Marguerite's secret lover was also aboard the voyage, as he had joined up with the colonists to move with her. He was poor and of a different class level, while she was a young noblewoman, so their relationship was forbidden. The lovers were unfortunately caught by her uncle, who angrily marooned her on the Isle of Demons. She was left alone on the lonely island and unable to get any help from any other ships as they were all terrified of the evil spirits. Her uncle left her with only a few goods and the company of an elderly nurse. Her lover ended up bravely jumping ship and swimming to shore to be with her. The trio built a hut and survived through the freezing winter by catching fish and wild birds. Marguerite and her lover decided to call each other husband and wife and had a child the following summer. Unfortunately, tragedy fell as her husband died. Then her child died, and the nurse shortly followed. Marguerite buried the bodies in three graves and was left alone on the evil island. She waited 18 months alone for a ship to come to the island and rescue her. However, they were all too afraid to go near due to the legends. Finally, as she neared her third winter living on the island, she saw another ship in the distance. She took a risk and burned off all of the fuel she had gathered in a giant bonfire to attract the ship's notice. The sailors were curious about the bonfire 
and decided to brave the spirits and solve the island's mystery. They found Marguerite wearing wild animal skins and waving frantically to them from the shore. She had spent three years exiled on the cursed island before being rescued back to France. The Isle of Demons first appeared on maps in 1508, but historians now believe it was mistaken for another island. There was a different legendary island called Devil's Island drawn just north of Antillia, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean during the 1400s. It is possible that the map makers meant that island but drew it with incorrect positioning. It was difficult for sailors and cartographers to measure positions accurately, so the non-existent Isle of Demons is most likely just another island placed in the wrong spot. But what do you make of these island adventure stories? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.